We're in week two of this series called Stuck Together. We're talking about relationships. And um, last week we talked about the cycle of deception. And I wanna go ahead and get into our, our kind of key verse, our root verse we've been dealing from. And it's in Colossians chapter two, verse six and seven. It says then this, so, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives. How many of you know we aren't finished? How many of you know you're not a finished product? Come on, wave at me. Come on, wave at me in the chat. Put the wave emoji. Come on, you, you're not a finished product. So continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up. Somebody shout rooted. rooted. Come on, you haven't been in church in a while, but we still talk back here. Come on, somebody shout rooted. Rooted, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. We talked about this last week, that if there are healthy roots, there'll be healthy fruit. So many times in our relationships, we're trying to address the fruit, but if you would address the root, then the fruit would take care of itself. Come on, let's pray together. Father, I pray that our hearts and minds would be open and receptive to receive the Word of God. May we never be the same because of it. May we get revelation today, not just information, but with something be revealed to us that would sink deep in our soul and our lives and our relationships would never be the same. May I deliver the word in the way you gave it to me with your help, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, amen. Well, this week I played a practical joke on my daughter. I have four kids, you know. Um, Owen is the oldest, Faith is second, Abigail is and Jonas is one. And um, I played a, a practical joke on uh, Faith, my 11-year-old. So in our house, we have three floors, right? We got the main level, then the upstairs, and, uh, and then we got a basement, and the basement is like the playroom, right? Part of it's finished, and it's like, you know, we don't go down there a lot because um, it, it gives my wife anxiety because of the mess that is down there. So we just kind of stay away from that. And, um, and so we were having a family night, so Tammy and I were on the first floor, Faith was on the second, Owen was in the basement. You know, just spending quality time together as a family. And, um, <laughs> and so uh, I decided I'm gonna play practical joke on faith. I like practical jokes. And um, uh, early in ministry, thankfully there wasn't social media. I don't know if I'd still be pa able to pastor at this point because I was a camp counselor and we had some amazing practical jokes. Like I made a lot of kids cry um, <laughs> with practical jokes. And um, so uh, all of our TVs run on Apple TV, all right? So if you don't know what that is, just a little streaming device. And, and uh, we cut cable a long time ago and just go with like Disney Plus and ESPN. ESPN. What more do you need than ESPN, right? But ESPN, YouTube TV, that kind of stuff. So we just stream everything. And, um, and so because of that, I can control all the Apple devices on my phone, right? And, um, and especially the one in the bedroom, we have to because our one-year-old did something with the remote, or at least we're blaming it on him. We lose anything, one-year-old did it. And so uh, we, we, I control all of them from my phone. So I had this thought, I don't know why, I was just sitting in the room with Tammy, we were watching something on Netflix. And, and um, so I had the remote open and I went and I chose the, um, the living room Apple TV. And uh, so I hit search. And, uh, and when I hit search, on for her, if you don't know, it pops up the search bar where you can type something in. So it interrupted her show and it put up the search bar and I typed in high faith. <laughs> now it doesn't indicate where this is coming from, all right? So she doesn't know it's me. So I type in high faith and she deletes that because I can watch it on my phone being deleted. <laughs> and she types, who is this? I delete that and I type back, I'm watching you. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, you're horrible. <laughs> I'm watching you and uh, I see her delete that. And then I hear two sets of foot, footprints coming up, or two sets, you know, because um, she has now called Owen up from the basement because as much as they fight, when she gets scared, she wants her brother beside her, her older brother, right? And so they both come upstairs to our room and uh, I was like, here they come, Tammy. And, uh, and so they both come upstairs to our room and I, I say to her, she goes, dad. She's like really nervous. She's like, dad, did you mess with me? Were you messing with the TV? I was like, no, babe, we're just watching this show. Netflix, what do, you, what do you mean? She's like, don't mess, don't, you're joking, dad. Cause I was kind of smiling because I was trying to hold it in. And so then I had to cover my smile and I was like, you're kidding, you guys are so funny. Get back downstairs. Mom and I just want some alone time to watch this show. And she was like, 
No, dad, seriously, were you messing with me on the TV? And then she goes, because I was watching it and the search thing comes up and they said, hi, Faith. And how do they know my name? And I think somebody is outside in the backyard. <laughs> and I was like, Faith, you're, you're crazy. Nobody can access our TV. You know, they, they're, they're, nobody's gonna do that. She was like, no, they said, hi, Faith. Then they said, I'm watching you. Someone was watching me, dad. Someone was watching me through the windows. And I was like, she goes, did you do that? And I was like, oh, Faith, I've just been up here watching TV. And, and then she was getting more and more scared. And then she started, tears started coming. And I was like, I'm sorry, baby, it was me, it was me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was me. You're like, you're a horrible dad. And I was thinking about that story, how fun it was, one. And then two, how that for a moment, I took away her security. And it created instability. Wow. I was thinking about that as we were, I knew they were in this series talking about relationships and how that I think one of the greatest sabotages we self-sabotage with in our relationships is insecurity. Wow. That, that insecurity, that feeling of, of self-doubt, of no confidence, of, of, of the inner critic that runs in on the playlist of our mind, and I started thinking about this, is that the enemy of your life wants to keep you insecure because insecurity creates instability. And just like faith for that moment was, was a little freaked out, and all of a sudden this, this safe space, this confident space, this, this, you know, there's no inhibitions in the four walls of our home because she is so confident in our house. She is, she's pretty confident outside the house too. Um, but she's so confident within the four walls of our house that there's, she's not afraid to go anywhere. She's not afraid to say anything. She's not afraid to do. Why? Because there's security, there's confidence. And for a moment, it was a little shaken for her. And so because of that, now fear gripped in and now self-doubt gripped in. And now she wondered, was this okay anymore? And here's what I know about us is that if we are not secure in ourselves, then instability will begin to set in. Self-doubt will begin to set in and we won't become and we won't be everything that God wants us to be. And our relationships don't have the ability to be all that God wants them to be because insecurity creates instability. And when I am in state, I am not all that I can be. I cannot be, let me say it this way, I cannot fully be the husband I need to be to Tammy if I'm living in insecurity. I cannot fully be the employee I'm meant to be if I'm living in insecurity because I won't bring my full self to the equation. I won't bring all of my thoughts to the equation. I won't bring all of my confidence and all the value that is in me. I won't bring it because I'm insecure, so I withhold it. I won't be the parent I need to be if I am insecure. I won't be the business owner I need to be. I'll become the lid of the organization and hamper its growth if I am insecure. And so insecurity is the greatest sabotage. It's the greatest sabotage, I believe, in relationships. Insecurity could be, could be the reason the marriage didn't make it. Insecurity could be the reason you didn't get the promotion or you lost the job. Insecurity could be the reason that you don't show up at the family functions anymore. Could be the reason that the friend cut you off or you cut them off, insecurities. Insecurities will lead you to comparison, and it's a trap. Insecurity could be the reason that you used to be the best of family friends, and now you no longer even talk anymore, because insecurity will sabotage your relationships, and the enemy loves it. He loves to feed you insecurity, 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 all the time, all the time, all the time. And some of you are thinking, well, that's just the thing really ladies deal with. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Guys aren't insecure. Oh, they're not? That, that, uh, you, you mean it's not insecurity that causes you to have a $700 car payment you can't afford to drive a car that you think impresses people around you? That's not insecurity? It's good, preacher. We all deal with it. 
And God must have a word for you in this today and must have a divine appointment for somebody today the way that insecurity attacked me this week as I was beginning to prepare this message to deliver this message. And we all need to grow in it and we won't think we need to grow in it if we have the wrong mindset. There are two mindsets that you can have in life. One is a goal mindset and one is a growth mindset. One is a goal mindset, the other is a growth mindset. I'm not saying you shouldn't set goals. I think they're wonderful. I don't set a whole lot of goals. I have a lot of vision, but I don't set a whole lot of, I'm not like a major goal guy. But a, a goal mindset has a finish line. A growth mindset doesn't have a finish line. And some of us have goal mindsets as it comes to our relationships, so when we hit the goal, we think we've arrived. The goal's to get married. She said, I do. I'm done. That's a goal mindset. A growth mindset says, no, I'm never arriving. I'm always evolving, and so I've got to continue to grow. A goal mind says, I want to get that job. I landed the job. Great. I'm done now. And you wonder why you got the job, but you never get promoted in the job. Because you crossed the finish line of getting the job, you didn't have a growth mindset, you had a goal mindset. I want to have a child. Well, you have a child, and you accomplish the gold finish line, and you wonder why years down the road you have no relationship with the child, or they don't open up to you, or you don't have a deep connection or mentorship in the child's life. It's because you didn't have a growth mindset. Just because you got in bed didn't make you a dad. May have been a sperm donor. Didn't make you a dad. A dad means I'm going to keep growing in this thing. How do I be a better dad, a better dad, a better father, a better mentor, a better investor, a better? Because I've got a growth mindset. I don't have a goal mindset. If I have a goal mindset, the goal is to get them out of the house, but I don't. I have a growth mindset. The goal is, the growth is that I'm going to continue to be a dad until the day I take my last breath, which means I'm going to continue to mentor. I'm going to continue to invest in. I'm going to continue to coach. I'm going to continue to pour in. It looks different along the way, but I got to continue to grow. The goal wasn't to become a pastor. The goal, I didn't have a goal, I had a growth mindset. And so every day, I want to be better this year than I was last year. And here's the tension. Are y'all with me so far? We're going to get into the text in a minute. The tension is this often in relationships, is that one person has a goal mindset, one has a growth mindset, one keeps growing, one stops growing, and that's the tension point. And so the one that is growing feels like they're dragging the other one along, and it creates tension. And eventually the tensions become so great it snaps and you have lost friendship, divorce. Or the other part is, is that this one decides I'll just stop growing. And the one that isn't growing feels like they're just constantly trying to change me. It's because you're not, if you were changing, no one would feel like they needed to change you. (laughs) Growth equals change. You know the worst comment you could ever get? This is not a compliment. It's for someone to not see you for a while and go, you ain't changed a bit. If someone said that to me, I would go home and really evaluate my life. I hope I've changed. I hope I'm not the same guy that planted this church 15 years ago. I hope I'm not the same guy that moved into this building, by the way, six years ago yesterday. I hope I'm not the same guy I hope I'm not the same parent I was 13 years ago the first day I hold my, held my oldest. I hope I've gotten better. I hope I'm growing. I hope I'm not the same person. I want a growth mindset. And I think the area that we need to always grow in is understanding, reclaiming, and having a revelation of where we find security. Because healthy relationships are the result of healthy people. Let me say it again. Healthy relationships are the result of healthy people. Get the people healthy, the relationship will be healthy. Are y'all with me? Come on, put your hands together if you receive that. I'm going to give you four, uh, what I hope are revelations for you today around um, this idea of security. I'm going to call them four secrets to security. And, um, And the first one is this. All I have is all I need. 
All I have is all I need. And then can I, let me give you a timeout. I wanted to tell you this first. Um, we're gonna look at Ephesians chapter one, basically verse one through nine. And, and the reason I went there in the text, uh, in the Bible this week is this, is because when I was 19 years old in college in Columbia, South Carolina, my sophomore year, um, <laughs> it was my second year of college. I don't know if I had enough credits that made it to be a sophomore. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. Yeah. first year of college wasn't the best. <laughs> the only A I got was for, um, I didn't get one. All right. So <laughs> as my dad would say, Daniel, that year you got an E for effort. Um, <laughs> Not a whole lot of it though. But my second year of college, um, a guy named Bill Jones, who's now the president of a university in a private school in South Carolina, um, invited me. I don't know why, me and about 12 other guys. And um, maybe he just saw how insecure we were. And, uh, and every week on a Wednesday night, we got together and he said, we're gonna walk through Ephesians chapter one together. You're gonna memorize it. I'm gonna teach it to you. And it helped me get a revelation. Um, it didn't fix everything. And, and I'm still in a growth process but it gave me a revelation of where I could find my security and I could find it in Christ. So number one, I want you to see is that all I have is all I need. Ephesians chapter one, verse three says this, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every, somebody shout every. Every, every spiritual blessing in Christ every spiritual blessing. So if you've accepted Christ today, and if you haven't, we wanna give you the opportunity to do that today, but if, you've, if you have a relationship with Jesus, then he has blessed you in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. So anything that heaven has to offer you, you've got it. So I can have security I can have confidence in this life. I don't have to walk around like insecure. Not, I can have, why? Because all I have is all I need. I've already got it all. God has blessed me in the heavenly realms in Christ. So, so here's the deal. I don't need you to, to I, I, I don't need you to like me for me to be okay because I'm okay because Christ has decided to bless me with every blessing in the heavenly realms. What more do I need? What more do I need when I have everything that heaven has to offer? What more do I need? So, so ladies, you don't need him to ask you out to be okay. Now, if he's smart, he will ask out a godly girl, brings her Bible to church, got her notebook out, ready to take some notes, ready to grow, and you better find a guy just like that. Don't take, we're gonna talk about it in a few weeks. Tammy and I are gonna preach a message together. Yes. Yes. She's gonna do half of it to the men. I'm gonna do the other half to the women. I'll give you a little preview. If he won't chase you, don't go out with him. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we're going to talk about how every time the Bible talks about husband and wife in that it talks about it in this way he who finds a wife that you're supposed to be hidden and he's supposed to be the pursuit of find he's got to find you don't be all out there showing him make him find some things make him find some things it's gonna be good it's gonna be good so don't miss this. It's going to be the last week, not next week, the last week of this series. And um, where was I? <laughs> Every spiritual blessing is available to you. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that house for, to make me feel some kind of way. If God blesses me with it, I'm happy to take it. But I don't need it to feel some kind of security in my life. I, I don't need your approval to, I don't need applause. I, I, don't, need, I don't need those things. My, I, I, I'm finding it somewhere else because all I have is all I need. I already have everything. God's already given me. He's blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is available to me. Now, here's the deal. Even though it's available to every follower of Jesus, we don't always access it. Now, I have a one-year-old. His name is Jonas. If you uh, see him on social media, he's got a big curly fro. And we have no plans of cutting it. I'm just gonna let that thing go. Um, but that kid, he loves to eat. Like, loves to eat. All the time. It's one of his favorite words right now. Eat, 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 eat. Eat, and I do. I do. 
Don't help me. Don't want any helps. He's 100% all the time. And, um, and so he'll, he'll eat in the morning. We, we, have a, we have a daycare at the church here for, for staff kids. And, um, and that's what happens when you hire a lot of young staff. They all get pregnant and you're like, oh, I'm gonna lose my staff. Let's start a daycare. And so... Um, <laughs> So we have a daycare for all the staff kids. And, uh, and so he goes to that. And, and so he'll leave the house eating. Um, he has snacks and food all through, uh, depending on who's packing, less food for me, more from his mom, who's packing lunch. And then he comes to my office. Before he gets to my office, he gets to my assistant's office and he knows the snack drawer in there. Then he comes to my office, he knows the snack drawer. And then we get home and he goes to the pantry wanting more snacks. Like this kid is a bottomless pit. And he's one. And, um, and so he'll go into the pantry though, and I, I put a lock on the pantry because I have a 13-year-old, 11-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Come on, parents. I put a lock on that pantry. And, um, so, but he'll go into the pantry, and he can't reach anything in the pantry. Now, everything in the pantry is available to him, but he can't reach any of it. So when I go in there with him, he's smart enough to do this. Because he knows if daddy picks him up, then not only does he have availability to everything in the pantry, he's got access to everything in the pantry. I want to tell you, all you have is all you need. You not only have availability, but if you just get into the arms of the Father, you also have access to everything that heaven has to offer. So let me ask you, why would you go looking for things in places that will not fulfill you when you already have all you need. It would be like this. I would think something was wrong with my son if he had access to the pantry but kept going to the trash can. And some of you in relationships, you keep going to the trash can. I'm not calling him trash, I'm just using this as a metaphor. You keep going to the trash can when you have availability and access to everything that heaven has to offer. Look what the Bible says in 2 Peter. It says, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. So how do I get it? Through my knowledge of him who's called us by his own glory and goodness. In other words, the more intimate I get with the Father, the more access I have to everything that is available to me. So why live insecure? Because all I have is all I need. All I have is all I need. I don't, I, I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate the encouragement if, if the message blesses you and you let me know it. But I just need to get off the stage and go, Jesus, were you happy with that? Because all I have is all I need. And man, you need relations. That's why we're putting, you know, so encouraging you to get in small groups. Some of you need to lead a small group. You really do. You need to lead a small group. And you're thinking, well, I'm uncomfortable. I don't want people in my house. We have Zoom groups. We have driveway groups. Um, we have meet at the park groups. Like you can space out distance. Some of you need, to, you need to lead a group in this season. We have people that are leading groups, don't even live in Virginia, that are part of the online family. You need, to lead, lead a, you need to lead a group. You need all that. But I don't, I don't have to have it for security because all I have right now is all I need. Can I tell you something? All you have is all you need. He's given you everything for life and godliness. All I have is all I need. I appreciate encourage. I appreciate encouragement. I appreciate someone saying something nice. I appreciate, I'm, I'm thankful to God when he blesses me with an opportunity or, or pro, some kind of provision in my life or, or gives, allows me to connect in a relationship with, with something that can open a door. For, I'm thankful, man. I'm so grateful to God, but I don't need that to be secure because all I have, come on, it's all I need. Number two, Number two revelation I want you to have is that my value is in his vision. My value is in his vision. My value isn't in my provision. My value is in his vision. L look why. For he chose us in him before. Somebody shout before. before. Before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace 
which he has freely given us in the one he loves. I love the generosity of our God. Now, now some people will look at this. There's debate over this, this and other texts. It's a, it's a theological concept. I'm not going to run into it with you. But a lot of people say, well, he predestined us, meaning that, um, that God already chose who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. Um, which I, I, don't, I don't think it, you, you can't just, uh, uh, you can't, um, it's called good hermeneutics. Come on, uh, intensive, le- leadership intensive. We, we taught a whole class on this in the college, but you can't, you can't do a good interpretation of the Bible in one scripture. That, that's called, you get a cult that way. Um, and so, are y'all following me? And so, uh, two, two schools of thought here is this, is one that God chose beforehand or that God knows everything beforehand. So in his foreknowledge, that, that's, that's what I think is more in line with totality of scripture. But either way, here's what he did. He did it before the creation of the world. So think about this with me, church. Get this in your spirit, that before the world was ever created, because God knew what man would do, the fall, Jesus, all that would have to happen, because he, he sees the beginning from the end, before the creation of the world, he so valued you and wanted you in the family that he set a plan in place to redeem you. He had vision for you before he ever said, let there be stars in the sky. He was creating a strategy to get you in the family of God. Before he ever said, let there be water and let the, are y'all getting this? Like this is incredible. Like my value now, you, you mean I'm gonna lower myself to find my value in the size of my house? Are you kidding me? When the God of the universe, before he ever spoke anything into existence, said I want you, I want you and my family, I want you and my family, I want you and my family, I want you, you and my family. Man, if God blesses you with a great house, wonderful. But I don't find my value by the emblem on the hood of my car. Why would I lower myself to that level when I have such a high calling that the God of the universe, come on, he chose me. He chose you. And listen, here's what I believe. If you would get this in your soul and understand your value, you would stop giving people in your life discounts. Why are you giving people discounts? Yes. Come on now. Why are you allowing people to treat you some of the ways they treat you? Say the things to you. If you knew your value, you wouldn't be saying, I'll go out with you, I'll give you 25% off, because I'm not worth 100%. I'm getting a little head, that's for week four. <laughs> Ladies, we're gonna talk about not giving anybody discounts. Come on now. You're too valuable. You're too valuable they should be paying 150% of the fee. The fee is called a ring. The fee is called integrity. Anyways, we're going to get a little head. The single ladies come the last week. All (laughs) All right. That's going to be something for everybody. We're going to help married and single. Look what the Bible says here. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers. Uh, What Peter's saying here is that at the end of the day, it's emptiness. When you chase everything that the world wants you to chase to find security, it ends you empty. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, how valuable you must be to the Father that the price he was willing to pay was the blood of his own son. Seriously, let that sink in a minute. That's not metaphorical. That's not hyperbole. That's not poetic. That that isn't any of this writing. This is literal. He purchased your salvation with his son's own blood how valuable you must be. How valuable you must be. My, my wife's engagement ring is a very valuable. Come on, like I'm, I've, in the, in the last, we were married 16 years and I'm like, I'm like, I wanna upgrade you, baby. I, I, I'm, 
you know, in my 40s, I can do a little better than what I was in my 20s. I want to upgrade you. And I was like, I bet if we go back to the place I got it, they would let me trade it in, right? Do the trade, the value of that towards something new. She's like, no, I'm not giving this one up. I won't want to give this one up. She goes, I'll wear it on the other hand. It was, I'm not, I can't give up the original. But if she lost it, neither one of us would shed someone's blood to find it, even though it's of great value to us. You were lost and so valuable to the Father. He said, there's only one way I can find that lost item, and that's to give my son, let nails go through his arms and his feet, let a crown of thorns, let a spear be put in his side. Let's do it. I want them that much. Don't ever lower yourself again to think that you aren't valuable because the God of the universe so wanted you, he paid the price of his blood of his son to get you. My value is in his vision of who I am. Number three is my seat is safe. My seat is safe. Let me, let me show you what Paul said in the next few verses. He said, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. So we get some things. What do we get? Let's, let's do a little Bible study here, right? We get redemption by the blood. We get forgiveness of sins. So we get redemption and forgiveness in accordance with what? The riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. So here's what I want you to understand is that the seat you have at the table in the kingdom of God, you didn't earn it. You didn't buy it. There's nothing you could do to get it. And there's nothing you could do to be kicked out of it. Your seat is safe. It should give you a lot of security deep in your soul to know that my, my seat is safe. It, it came because of grace. I'll stay there because of grace. I'll remain there because of grace, but my seat is safe. Are you following me? And so I don't, I don't, have, to, I don't have to live like everybody else wants me to. I'm not, I'm not living for the approval of everybody else. I'm living for the approval of God who, guess what, already approves of me. So I'm not striving. I'm not, I'm not striving, I'm not on the treadmill. No, my, my seat is safe. But I think a lot of us think that, that, the, that we, do, we do something, make a bad choice, make a wrong choice, and all of a sudden God kicks us out of our seat. Whenever I was a kid, we, I had two older sisters. I'm the baby boy, the favorite. <laughs> That's what I always say. And, um, and so we had like dads, anybody grow up in this home, like you had dad's recliner, nobody sat there. It was dad's recliner. Nobody sat in dad's recliner, right? And then there was the couch. And, um, and usually all the siblings didn't want to sit on the couch because that meant you were close to each other, right? And don't touch me. Get your feet off me. He's touched, right? And so one of you, anyway, somewhere landed up in the floor or sitting on the, the ledge of the fireplace or something watching TV or, or when you're all in the family room together um, because we didn't have three levels with three different TVs. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? And so, um, so anyways... So if you got up to go in the kitchen or you got up to go to the bathroom or something, before you got up, you had to yell, seat back. Because if you didn't, then someone would take your seat, right? And so you would yell, seat back. And then if you, if you came back and you hadn't yelled, if someone was in your seat, you'd be like, get out of my seat. We'd be like, no, you didn't yell, seat back. It's my seat, right? So I just had this whole game that went on in our house. And, um, and here's what I feel like, is that some of us feel like when we make decisions that maybe don't please the Father, that we get out of our seat and that we didn't yell seat back and so someone else has taken our seat and so we think, I don't know if God wants me back at the table. I don't know if God wants me back in my seat. I just want you to know that the moment you made a decision that didn't approve of by God, he yelled, hey, I got your seat. Seat back for them. I'm reserving their seat. I'm keeping their seat at the table. I'm not letting anybody else take their seat. There's plenty of room at the table of God for everybody to come up. And so I just want you to know your seat is safe. Your seat is safe. It's grace that got me here. 
And so I don't, I don't have to act some way. I don't have to, I'm good. I'm growing in it. Some days I'm not good. Some days I, I do the dumb thing of looking at the direct messages on my Instagram and kind of knocks me back a year or two. That's why I don't read them usually. Sometimes criticism, it knocks me back and it creates self-doubt and insecurity and lack of confidence. And sometimes I have to make a leadership decision and people don't like it. And then I'm, I'm like, oh no, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I shouldn't. Oh God, can I lead that? I spiral down fast, y'all. I'll just let you know. Like, Whatever I'm doing, I'm 100% at it. So if I'm insecure, I'm dead. I'm gone, right? I should resign tomorrow. That's what I should do. I should walk up in the church, resign tomorrow, leave. I've, I've ruined this whole, it's all sinking. The whole ship is sinking. And I'm, I'm at the front, I'm on the Titanic and I just sunk the whole ship and I'm probably gonna go to hell now. And like, I get there fast, like 30 seconds. I know y'all don't. I know it's just like, you have one little thought and then you're like, no, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus and you worship and everything's better, but not me. I spiral real fast. Like I get down and I get down real fast. But my seat is safe. I've been called a child, an heir. Man, when your seat is safe, it allows you to walk into relationships with some confidence. You don't, you don't give up conviction and you don't violate things in your life you never would because your seat is safe. Say, you know why? You didn't make the seat. <laughs> you didn't earn the seat. You didn't get put in the seat. Grace got you there. And grace will keep you there. Number four. Actually, let me, let me show you this. For it is by what? Grace. Come on, say it again. Grace. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It's a gift of God. Your seat's safe. Number four. Is that my source is steady? We'll close on this one. My source is steady. Look where Paul says he got all this from, the source of all this. He said, with all wisdom and understanding, he, being God, made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Where did all this come from? Where did the knowledge of this, where did... Wow, my understanding, where did redemption, where did forgiveness, where did adoption, where did I've been chosen, where did before the creation, where, what, what was the, where was the source of all that? Tim, it's not me. So my source, steady. My, I'm in a pandemic and my company isn't steady, but your source is, so I can be secure. We've been stuck together and man, there's friction in the home and it feels unstable, but you don't have to be because your source is steady. Your source is steady. You know what that means? I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live in worry. I, can I just speak to you? Can I pastor you for a moment? I'm really concerned for some of you that fear has gripped your heart in this season. I'm not saying don't be wise and and don't take precautions and, and do what is in the best interest of your health. But I'm just saying the outside pandemic, I think is becoming an inside pandemic. And can I just tell you, your source is steady. If you have hitched your wagon to the person of Jesus Christ, if your source is the person of Christ, perfect love cast out fear. And the perfect love of the Father cast out fear because my source is steady. Pandemics come and pandemic go. Election come, election go. Let the world come and let the world go. My source has remained steady for thousands of years, for a millennia before time and eternity ever began. My source was steady. My feet are planted in the person of Jesus Christ. I'm not planted on shaking ground that comes and goes with what the news media is saying. I am planted on the Word of God, the person of Jesus, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of the Lord remains forever. My source is steady. 
so I can live secure. And so now with that security, I step into my friendships and I step into my working relationships and I step into my marriage and my parent-child and all these relationships. But you know what? I bring health to them. Why? Because healthy relationships are made of healthy people. And healthy people are growing in their security. I'm not gonna put the standard on you that healthy people are secure people because we all have room. But healthy people are growing in their security. They're not letting insecurities manipulate them and master them. Not that they don't rise and flare up, man, they do. But they're not allowing the inner critic of their mind to be the loudest voice. They're allowing the word of God to be the loudest voice. So secrets of security, I hope you'll take these internalize these let them sink into your soul let them sink deep into your soul that you wouldn't be blown around by every wave every opinion every post every nah you're steady you're secure you're locked in god's got you my feet are on a solid foundation Old hymn I grew up on said, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground sinking sand. Don't be on sinking sand today. Will you pray with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Come on in every room, no matter if you're on a campus or online, if you can. Some of you, as I talk about being on a steady foundation, you don't know what that's about, about being rooted in Christ. You're like, I don't... I don't know that I've ever experienced that. For some of you, your source isn't Jesus because you feel in your heart you're so far from God. And some of you today, you would even say that if someone were to ask you, are you a Christian? You'd say, yeah, I'm a Christian. But if I were to say, do you feel close to God or far from him? You'd say, I feel far from him today. And today I wanna give you an opportunity, no matter what place you are, whether you feel like you're distanced from God or you feel like you've never had a relationship with Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity to begin one today. And the Bible says that we've all sinned. That just means we've all blown it and we're all in that boat. And it says because of that, it separates us from God. So when we're separated from God, we don't even have access to the pantry or availability to the pantry. And so God made a way before the creation of the world, as I said, he made a way for you to know God. And the way that he made it is through the person of Jesus. And the scripture says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, he's in control of our life, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So today you can know as you leave this moment that heaven is your home. And if that's you today, I wanna give you the opportunity to do that. In just a moment, we're gonna pray together as a church family. And if you'd say, Pastor, that's me. I feel like I'm far from God today. And feel like I've walked away or I've never really known what it is to begin that relationship and I want to today and I wouldn't embarrass you for the world but in just a moment I'm gonna count to three when I do you just shoot your hand up if you're in the chat you just put the hand up in there in the chat and let us know that and and we want to pray together with you in just a second so when I count to three if you'd say pastor that's me I feel far from God today or I've never began a relationship with Jesus but I want to with no one looking around pray that you'd respect this moment. When I count to three, you shoot your hand up. This is your moment. One, two, three. You just shoot it up high. God bless you. God bless you. You can put those down. Church, would you pray out loud with me, everyone, for the benefit of those who are making that decision today? Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. And everybody said big amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those who made that decision. Incredible decision. Hey, hope today's message was helpful for your life. I want to tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.